Okay, in today's lesson we're going to look at how our knowledge of linear functions can be used for mathematical modelling. Alright, just a quick revisor on uh, linear functions. So this is from the 2002 HSC. Which one of the following graphs could be a graph of y equals 3x plus 1? Well, that's in y equals mx plus b form. So we know the gradient is 3 and the y-intercept is 1. So straight away you can eliminate b because that has a negative gradient, as does d. And then we can eliminate C because it has a y-intercept that is negative, leaving us with the fact that A is the correct answer for that question. Here's another typical using a linear function as a mathematical model question from the 2007 HSC, uh, using a currency conversion graph. So Sandy travels to the Europe via the USA. She uses this graph to calculate her currency conversions. And a key point to notice is that there are specific points marked on that graph for you. So you need to use those points as indicated by those dotted lines in your calculations. After leaving the USA, she has 150 US dollars to add to the Australian $600 that she plans to spend in Europe. She converts all her money to euros. How many euros does she have to spend in Europe? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to convert the US dollars to Australian dollars and then work out how many Australian dollars she has in total and convert those to euros. So using the gradients, we can see that 100 Australian dollars is the equivalent of 60 euro dollars. And that means that one Australian dollar would be the equivalent of 0.6 euro dollars. Likewise, 100 Australian dollars is the equivalent of 75 euro dollars, uh, US dollars. And one, that means that one Australian dollar would be the same as 75, uh, 0.75 US dollars. And that's taken using those dotted lines that are put on those graphs. That means if we want to convert um, 150 US dollars, to Australian dollars, we would have to divide by 0.75, meaning that 150 US dollars is the equivalent of 200 Australian dollars. So that tells us that Sandy now has a total of 800 Australian dollars um, that she now wants to convert to euros. So 800 Australian dollars, to convert that to euros, well, one Australian dollar is worth 0.6 of a euro, so we simply multiply by 0.6 to get $480. So the answer to part one, how, much, how many euros does she have to spend? 480. Part two says, if the value of the euro falls in comparison to the Australian dollar, what will be the effect on the gradient of the line used to convert Australian dollars to euro? Well, what that actually means is that an Australian dollar is worth more euro dollars than it was previously because the value of the euro is falling relative to the Australian dollar. That means that the gradient would get steeper because one dollar would be worth, Australian dollar would be worth more euro dollars. Okay, another example. Uh, the cost C of manufacturing some plastic widget is given by the equation C equals 20N plus 4, where N is the number of widgets produced. Um, and I gather C is actually in cents. What is the dependent variable and what is the independent variable? So when you're asked that sort of question, you're really considering which one depends on the other. And if you do that, you can see quite easily that the cost of manufacturing is dependent upon the number of widgets that you actually produce. So C is the dependent variable and N is independent. When N equals zero, the bracket still costs four cents. Explain why there's still a cost involved when no plastic brackets are produced. Well, even if you're not producing any brackets, if you've created the machinery, uh, it would be the setup processes, or setup costs for the manufacturing process or, or some, something like that, so startup costs. Okay, another example, and this is where we actually have to generate a linear model from some information. So a hire company ch charges a $200 delivery fee and a rental fee of $400 per week for a generator. How much would it cost to hire the generator for four weeks? So obviously if we think about that, it's going to cost us the $200 for the uh, delivery fee and then four lots of $400 per week or a total of $1,800. The next step then is to write an expression relating the total charge C and the number of weeks W for which the generator is hired. Well, if we think about that, well, if we don't hire it, if we don't actually uh, rent it for any number of weeks, we'd still be charged a $200 delivery fee, although why well, you'd have it delivered without renting it, I have no idea. So that's obviously the value when W is zero. Um, and then the rate per week is $400, which is the gradient of that graph. So the expression or the we would write would be C is 200 plus 400 W. 
And the last part asks us to sketch a graph of that relationship. So we've got our relationship C equals 200 plus 400 W. We need to substitute suitable values to get points we can plot onto a graph. So we need to have our scale and our axes for where we're going to draw our graph. So we need to determine which is our dependent variable and which is our independent. And we already decided that the cost, total cost is the dependent variable and that goes on the vertical axis and the independent variable goes along the horizontal axis. Uh, often in the HSC you'll actually be given the axes to draw but not always. You must ensure that you have labels on your x-axis. A suitable even scale, uh, it can be different for both the axes but it must be the same on each axis, and a title. Once you've done that we can plot some points and I've drawn the first point in there and then plotted a few other points for different values of W. And once we've done that, we can uh, join the dots to get our straight line. So it's very important that you label your axes and give your graph a title and that you have a suitable even scale and you must use a ruler. Okay, I really like this question from the 2003 HSC. Um, it's a little bit small there, so I'll, it's question 26 um, and it was worth quite a few marks. So we're going to work through it part a bit at a time. So at a World Cup rugby match, the stadium was filled capacity for the entire game. At the end of the game, people left the stadium at a constant rate. The graph shows the number of people in in the stadium t minutes after the end of the game. The equation of the line is of the form n equals a minus bt, where a and b are constants. Write down the value of a and give an explanation for its meaning. Well, if we think about what our general equation of a straight line is, y equals mx plus b, b is the y-intercept. And this expression or this equation is actually written in a slightly different form, but a is the y-intercept. So a is 60,000, and that represents the capacity of the stadium. And it represents the capacity because in the initial wording of the question, it told us the stadium was filled with capacity. So two marks there, one for actually finding the value of A, 60,000, and another mark for actually explaining what it means. Part, question two says calculate the value of B. Well, BT, so B would be the gradient of our line. So if we think about how we calculate the gradient of a line, rise over run, we can see quite easily that B will be 60,000 divided by 30, um, which is 2,000. And it's negative in the expression because the stadium's empty. And part two of question part two is what does this value represent? And it represents the rate at which people are leaving the stadium. Okay, this question continues. First of all, it says rearrange the formula n equals a minus bt to make t the subject. Now, a common error would have been to use the values of a and b you calculated previously but this wants you to do it without substituting those values in. So if we've got n equals a minus bt, if we add bt to the left-hand side and subtract n from both sides, we can get that bt is a minus n. Then dividing both sides by b, we get an expression t is equal to a minus n on b. Part 4, how long did it take 10,000 people to leave the stadium? Well, there's a couple of ways we can do this. The first, which I think is the easiest, is to think, well, they're leaving at the rate of 2,000 people per minute. That was the gradient of our straight line. Therefore, it's going to take us five minutes to leave. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Or you could use part three, um, but you have to be a bit careful because um, A, we discovered was 60,000 and B was 2,000. N is the number of people left in the stadium. So if 10,000 people have left, then there will be 50,000 le um, left in the stadium. So if 10,000 people have left the stadium, there would be 10,000, uh, 50,000 remaining in the stadium. And thankfully that gives us the same result as before, five minutes. The final part of this question was copy or trace the graph of n against t shown above in your answer booklet. Suppose that 15 minutes after the end of the game, several of the exits had been closed, reducing the rate at which people left. So the key words there are reducing the rate. So if we're thinking about the rate at which people were leaving, that was the gradient of our graph. So if the gradient reduces, the graph will become less steep and the gradient reduces after 15 minutes. 
And it then asks us to, on the same axis, carefully draw another graph of n against t that could represent this new situation. Your new graph should show n from t equals 15 until all the people have left the stadium. Now, obviously, all the people have left the stadium when n is 0. So the first thing I would do is mark in where 15 is. And for the first 15 minutes, the gradient of that graph is going to remain the same because it was the same rate, all the, all the exits were open. It's after that 15 minutes that we have to think about what's going on, and that's where the rate decreases, so the gradient will be less steep. And for the two marks, you'd have to show that you clearly marked in that 15 and the gradient of the, se after the second 15 minutes or after 15 minutes was less. Hopefully that helps you with understanding linear functions for general mathematics.